Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your extraordinarily handsome science teacher who is absolutely not going bald, but I actually am. Anyway, uh, in this video, we're going to be learning about volcanoes. <music> So let's talk for a, a few minutes about volcanoes. We have talked already about mountain formation in another video, because I like to say in another video, in another video, in another video. Uh, but we have, in another video, talked about mountain formation. And you can go watch that video to learn uh, and do the packet that goes along with it uh, to learn about mountain formation. One type of mountain that forms are volcanic mountains. And uh, they merit their own unit and video because they are, there's a lot that goes into volcanoes that we need to understand. So in this video, we're going to talk about what volcanoes are, the parts of a volcano, and the types of volcanoes. Oh, and also we're going to talk about uh, different types of pyroclastic material and lahars, which are a river of mud. Okay, so let's start with the anatomy of a volcano. And there are different kinds of volcanoes, but for the most part, they're all very similar to each other. Okay, not entirely, but uh, we can make generalizations about them. And the vast majority of volcanoes have, at least if they're not extinct, have beneath them what is called a magma chamber. And by the way, what is magma anyway? Uh, remember, scientists like to sound smart and Scientists like to be like, I know more words than you. So you don't know as much as me because you're not as smart as me because they have issues. Uh, right. Anyway, uh, so magma and lava really are the exact same thing. But just to confuse people, we use the word magma when we're talking about it, the, it, the stuff, magma being underground. And we use the word lava when we talk about it being on the surface. And if you use the wrong word, then people look at you like you're not very smart, which is silly because they're the same word, but same thing. But they're not. Magma is underground. Lava is on the surface. So if you want to sound smart, use the words that way. Uh, and so underground, because it's underground, we, it, we call it magma. There's a magma chamber. It's this big chamber, this big cave and they can be huge. Some magma chambers are miles and miles or dozens of miles across filled with magma. And it's coming up from the mantle of the earth and it's you know, flowing up and filling up that magma chamber and building up pressure, becoming increasingly uh, pressurized. And eventually... The pressure becomes too much and it blows the top off and uh, the cool cap that has cooled down of, of solid rock on the top and it erupts. Uh, the, as it erupts, the magma flows upward through what we call a vent. An event is like a long straight up and down more or less tube that or cave that the magma flows through flows out of and most volcanoes have a primary vent which is the biggest one that goes to the top of the main mountain but they might also have secondary vents that come out the side of the volcano so there might be a crater at the top and there might be a few secondary craters on the side and speaking of crater that's another word you need to know another part of a volcano is the crater which is a depression at the top of the volcano where the stuff erupts out of. Okay, so those are the main parts of a volcano: a magma chamber, a vent, a primary vent, a secondary vent, and a and a crater at the top. Um, you might also talk about when we talk about volcanoes, 
the uh, stuff that comes out, which is no longer called magma because we want to confuse people. It's called lava now, right? And the lava flows down the side of the mountain and slowly builds it up. With each successive eruption, the mountain is getting bigger. It's forming a bigger and bigger and bigger mountain. Well, if the material is ejected into the sky, then we don't call it uh, lava. We call it pyroclastic material. Okay, And there are some different kinds of pyroclastic material. If the material is, and it's all lava, but it's just, uh, hardens as it comes out, it's ejected in the, way into the sky. And if it's fine particles like dust, like flour almost, we call it ash. And these are just microscopic bits of lava that have cooled into a whole bunch of tiny dust sized pieces that are small enough that they can be suspended in the air. And this material, the ash, can actually travel thousands of miles. In fact, with some volcanic eruptions, some of the really big ones, it will actually travel around the entire Earth and totally surround the Earth with a little bit of ash that darkens the sky slightly uh, and helps to block out some of the sunlight and can actually create uh, effect temperatures all around the world. Back in the 1800s, early 1800s, this actually happened. There's a big volcanic eruption and it ejected uh, ash out into the atmosphere, cool, dark in the sky, not a lot, but enough. And uh, that lowered the temperature. And they had, actually had a summer without a summer. It went winter, winter, winter. They didn't have a summer that year because around the world because it got so much cooler. So that's ash. It's dust that comes out of a volcano that can travel thousands of miles. Then we get to slightly bigger pieces, like maybe coin size, pebble size pieces. And we call these lapilli or lapilli, depending on who you, what you're, you know, they're, they're both right. So lapilli or lapilli. And uh, these are just tiny pebbles. They don't go nearly as far as the dust. You know, they might, depending on the power of the eruption, they could go miles. But generally, they just tend to go hundreds of feet or maybe thousands of feet around the uh, volcano. Then we get up to slightly bigger pieces. Maybe they are toaster oven size, shoebox size. Uh, and we call these volcanic bombs, which is a pretty cool sounding word, a volcanic bomb. And you can imagine big shoebox size globs of lava shooting out of the volcano. And as they shoot up, they harden and they get a hard shell and they in the air and then they land on the ground and poof, they explode and maybe they have a little bit of still molten magma inside of them. Maybe they don't, uh, but sometimes they do. So we call them volcanic bombs and these are going to go hundreds of feet at most okay? because they're pretty big. Well, I guess in a big volcanic eruption, they could go a lot further, but typically hundreds of feet. And then we get to the really big pieces. These are like boulder sized pieces that shoot out, and these we've referred to as blocks, okay? So the different pyroclastic material are, again, uh, ash, lapilli, or lapilli, and vol volcanic bombs, and volcanic blocks, okay? Uh, and then, now let's talk about a river of mud and ash and material volcanic material that's going flowing down the side of a volcano but is not lava if you can imagine if i've got this ginormous volcano and it's been sitting dormant for a long time and so it's got a lot of soil on it and it's got maybe it's got a snow capped on the top of it and an eruption happens well all of that snow is going to melt fairly quickly and that soil is going to be mixed with the ash and things, and it's going to just come down the mountain in a giant river of mud and ash and water called the lahar. Okay, so one of the th things you have to look out for, if you're ever, you know, having a picnic on the side of a volcano that's erupting, uh, just watch for lahars because you're going to want to move your picnic basket out of their way. Okay, uh, let's talk now about the three main types of volcanoes. There are other types too, but we're talking about the three main types of volcanoes. The first type of volcano are the baby volcanoes. And we're going to start with babies and then we're going to get bigger and bigger. 
So the first type is a cinder cone. Cinder cones are actually kind of a fascinating uh, concept. Make a great movie. In fact, I think there actually is a movie about a cinder cone in Los Angeles. Uh, their cinder cones are volcanoes that didn't exist and they can happen anywhere. Don't happen very often, so you don't need to lose sleep over them. We're talking, you know, every that few thousand years, uh, probably not in your lifetime. But there was a cinder cone back in the early 1900s that formed in down in Mexico. And they just kind of come out of nowhere. The little tiny bit of lava just boils to the surface through the Earth's crust. And there's a volcano. They tend to live uh, very short lives. Okay, they typically last 10 years, 20 years, and they burn themselves out. And they're not very big, maybe 1,000 feet high. They're basically hill-sized. Okay, uh, you could walk up one in a matter of minutes. Uh, there's a cinder cone, an ancient cinder cone, where, near where I used to live in Utah, down in St. George. Uh, so cinder cones are volcanoes. They're tiny baby volcanoes that have very short lives, and don't really have a continuous source of magma to keep them going. They just kind of, it's just a little bubble of magma that made its way to the surface and makes a quick volcano and then it's done. The next volcano, which is much larger, is called a composite cone, also often called a stratovolcano. Strato means stratosphere. That means really high up in the atmosphere. Okay, they're much bigger than cinder cones. Uh, stratovolcanoes or uh, composite cones, composite volcanoes, are what we typically tend to think of when we think of a volcano. They form on a continental crust, and they are very explosive, powerful volcanoes. Because as the magma comes up through the Earth's crust, it gets a, it, it collects a lot of volatile material that is much more, uh, it has a lot more energy. It, well, volatile is the right word. It's much more volatile. So it ex, it's more explosive. So these volcanoes, uh, stratovolcanoes or composite cones, when they erupt, tend to erupt in dramatic fashion. They tend to like maybe rip half the mountain off of it. They can really explode in an impressive way Okay, and kill everything that's on the mountain and within you know any reasonable distance of a stratovolcano. So there's a chain of mountains called the Cascade Mountains, which are made of many stratovolcanoes or composite volcanoes, composite cones. Very tall, you know, thousands of feet tall, with mountains, you know, they make mountains that are capped in snow, powerful eruptions. The third type of volcano is what is known as a shield volcano. And shield volcanoes are actually even bigger than stratovolcanoes, but they are much less powerful, much less dangerous. They're more docile. They form over oceanic crust, and oceanic crust doesn't have all of these volatile materials in it. And so as they form, they are not nearly as explosive. Okay, In fact, they're just kind of runny. Like a runny nose, the the volcano is the nose of the I don't know what I'm trying to say, and the lava is the snot that comes out. I guess that's gross. Anyway, uh, a, an example of a shield volcano would be Mauna Loa, would be actually the entire uh, island chain of Hawaii, but actively Mauna Loa, which is a volcano that is massive. In fact, Mauna Loa is the biggest mountain, tallest mountain, if you go from the base to the, the peak in the world. It is taller than uh, Mount Everest, actually. But Mount Everest goes higher because it starts higher. Okay, Mauna Loa starts at the floor of the ocean. But if we took the full size of Mauna Loa, it would actually be the tallest mountain in the world. And um, this... But it's not steep. It doesn't have steep sides. It has gentle sides that go up and up and up much more gently. So stratovolcano has steep sides that go up. A shield volcano has gentle sides that go up. Uh, 
shield volcanoes do not explode and they will never explode. A shield volcano cannot become a stratovolcano. Okay, it's different kinds of magma in them. So uh, composite or stratovolcanoes are always going to be explosive and powerful. Shield volcanoes are always going to be docile. That doesn't mean they're not destructive. That magma still comes out of them. It's still hot. It's still going to cover things. You know, sometimes in Hawaii, the roads get covered and sometimes homes get covered. But you have a lot of time because it happens really slowly to, I mean, you can literally w walk along the edge of the magma and stand there and take pictures of it. I've done that. Okay, I've stood a foot away from the front of the magma as it was spreading out because it moves so slowly. Okay, so that is a shield volcano. Now, there are some other kinds of volcanoes, such as, for example, a caldera. A caldera is a very powerful type of volcano, which used to be a stratovolcano or composite cone, but it had such a powerful eruption that it actually blew its mountain away. There is no mountain left. Okay, so it's just a depression in the ground. Uh, and there are there's a really powerful one in the western United States in, around Yellowstone, which is an incredible, incredible volcano. When it erupts, again, it will do massive destruction to the entire uh, North American continent. I mean, it's not going to change the shape of the North American continent, but it's going to leave ash and material all across vast portions of the North American continent. Just a huge volcano. Another type of volcano or volcanic activity is a fissure, uh, which are common in places like a mid-oceanic rift or ridge where continents are pulling apart and magma is bubbling up through them. So, uh, you know, those are other types of volcanoes as well. So now you know the parts of a volcano, the types of a volcano, and the types of pyroclastic material and what is a lahar. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. These rambling science videos where I go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that I teach, which you can sign up for if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes, all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, uh, a science teacher with, well, three, three degrees, but two of them are in science. So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your uh, your science student so sign up subscribe to the channel and I release lots of videos also in addition to these ones lots of little uh, short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics those ones you don't get to see my handsome face but they're still good videos and they're much more targeted and those ones are scripted so you don't have to hear me like you are right now going blah 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 the end uh, subscribe thank you goodbye